Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So um, today we're going to be learning some gRPC and protocol buffers and how we can leverage them to make our own um, web applications. So I hope you enjoy and let's get to it. <laughs> Alright, so I put a little quick slide deck and just ignored this or just, I don't know, just, just ignore this. But anyway, I'm going to do this whole video with this. So um, we're going to be talking about um, protocol buffers, what are there, you know, what are they, gRPC, and at the end we're going to build our own node um, with TypeScript. Obviously, it's going to be super difficult if you're, I mean, it's not going to be super difficult, but um, it's hard to guess and check what arguments of functions trying to take. You can just do TypeScript and get all those type definitions with you. And we're just going to make a gRPC um, server client communication. And the communication is going to be through protocol buffer. So what, what what's all these big words, right? Like what, what am I talking about? Right? And I'm trying to um, boil this down to what it is simply because I truly think that's all that matters. Um, especially for this video. So what is protocol buffers? Protocol buffers are called protobufs, protocol buffers, they're interchangeable. So it's a way of, um, it, it, a protobuf is a data serialization method similar to JSON. So just think about um, back in the day when we had SOAP and I, I wasn't around back for the web development day, so I'm not sure I'm just going according to what was told. Like you read history books and you're like, oh yeah, people got killed back in the day. So it's almost like that. So um, you use XML to transfer through SOAP. You use JSON to transfer through um, through REST and through your um, normal endpoints. Um, and uh, I forget how, actually I haven't, I don't know exactly how gRPC does the, the communication, but I'm pretty sure it's something different. But so um, gRPC uses protocol buffers to um, have a client server communication. So almost think about the language between the server and the um, client. And you guys have to have a common language to talk to each other, to try to understand what um, someone needs from another. So instead of formatting, instead of formatted string, it converts it to a binary format. So it's not like your regular XML or JSON where it's sort of human readable, like they use letters. Um, it's usually English and you can understand it when you read it. But with protocol buffers is actually binary format. So you're looking at it and unless you're Arnold Schwarzenegger from like Terminator, you're not gonna understand that, there's no way. And the key benefit about this is that it's it's binary format, so it makes the communication super efficient for um, large JSON data sets. And I want to emphasize this for large JSON data sets because for today's example, it's going to be very small, a very small JSON payload, which you won't notice that much of a significant um, significant savings when it comes to um, converting it to binary. Okay, so that's what protocol buffers are. It's just it's similar to JSON. So now, what is gRPC? So gRP stands for um, it's they don't say it, but it's Google. It's Google Remote Procedural Call. It's it's technically called RPC, but gRPC came in. Google came in and was like, hey, I'm gonna define my own standard over here. And in 2015, they created it and they called it gRPC. So gRPC can be con compared to REST. Um, it can be compared to REST. I'm not saying it is like REST. I'm saying it can be compared to REST the, way, the same way JSON can be compared with protocol buffers. Um, so it's defined, it's it it's a defined, I, I did that wrong. So it's a defined communication mechanism between a client and a server. So it defines, um, it, it, it defines the way um, it, it's gonna talk to, I'll talk to, different clients. So, and it only works over HTTP2. So that's like a key difference. Um, you can't, currently right now, I don't believe any browser, any modern browser um, supports gRPC communication. Like there's no way a server is directly communicating with a client. There are ways around it. And um, we will go over those in, um, in a later video, but um, for, for now, just understand that it requires HTTP2 exclusively, um, unless you're we're doing it on local development, because then there's a way to get around that. So gRPC user call uses 
protocol buffers as a form of communication. We already went through this and the contract is defined through a proto file. So what this proto file is, it's almost like a JSON file where you define your services and you define your messages, your messages, which would technically be responses and requests. And you're going to define that um, schema over there. And that file is going to get consumed by both your server and your client. And that's how they um, communicate with each other pretty much. So well, what did you get from this? If, if you got anything from this video, it's simply JSON is to REST, what protobuf is to gRPC. There's one thing you got from the slide deck, it's that. So here's a little picture that I got off. Um, I said that probably, yeah, this is off Google's own official website for gRPC. You know, you have a C++ um, that access a server over there on, on your left. And over on the right, there's two clients. This is a client in Ruby and a client in Java. And what this really uh, is showing is that you can have different services, different clients on different languages, but as long as they use the common interface through gRPC, how it defines it through proto files, you can have um, seamless communication um, between client and server, regardless of the, the language. Currently right now, if you go on grpc.com, you actually do see the supported languages that um, Google supports, because essentially what you do is you define these proto files and then, um, Google has this proto compiler that creates your specific services or your specific clients um, based on the, the schema definition. And then you just say what language you're using and bam, you, you get your server your client. You just have to define the business logic between them, but all communication between server and client is handled out of the box. Let's see if I have any more. Okay, so what are we going to do today, right? Like, we're, let's put this into practice. So we're going to create a gRPC server um, using Node and TypeScript because I'm not doing it without TypeScript. You come to the wrong video. Um, we're going to create a client as well in Node and TypeScript, and we're going to create various services that can be used um, by the client. So the, we're going to define various um, services in the in in the server, and the client just going to um, interface with them. And we're going to make four different types of services. And those four different types of services will be four different types of gRPC calls that are supported. So there's four right now. There's unary. So that is, um, think about it as how we do all our REST calls today. So you, the, the client makes one request and the server usually sends back only one response. So it's one request, one re response, and the connection is closed. That's how unary works, or I might be butchering the word. Client streaming. So this is where there is an open communication between the client and the server, but the only difference is the client is allowed to stream data to the server. It is allowed to stream data to the server, and the server isn't isn't allowed to. Well, it's not isn't allowed to, but it's not defined. The the, the server can't really do that. Um, in this sort of call. Then we have server streaming. So this is um, the other way around where the where the server makes one call and uh, sorry, the client makes one call to the server and then the server sends in a stream of data. Um, really cool, really cool stuff. And finally, we have bi-directional streaming. So this can be um, closely related to WebSockets. If you really want to go down that route, it's it's sort of like WebSockets. And I'm going to sort of actually build a chat application. It's not going to be a um, browser, but it's going to be a, a terminal application. But we're going to see how you can make a chat app with um, gRPC. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so we are back at it. So I have this empty folder here. You know what we're going to do. Um, your preference, whether you want to use Node or Yarn. I personally just use Yarn. Um, for It doesn't matter in this case. So Yarn init dash Y, because I just want to accept all the default, um, the default questions. And now we're going to install some um, packages. And honestly, compared to my last videos, this is very few packages. So I'm so happy. So let's do yarn add dash dash dev. All of these will be dev dependencies. So the main one is going to be grpc forward slash grpc dash uh, js. That's the first one. The next one is grpc 
um, forward slash proto loader. So proto loader is what consumes these proto files and grpc.js is what defines the sort of the client and server mechanism. Um, what we also need is TypeScript. Hello, we need TypeScript. Um, and also we need TS node. So TS node is, is what's going to compile and run our, our, our TypeScript. So TS, TS node, not TS code. Okay, not like t.code, it's branded. All right, so we got all of that mumbo jumbo um, set up. So now let's create two files. Let's create a server.ts and let's create a client.ts. So let's focus first on the server. Um, so let's open the server out and let's import now a few things into our code and then we'll define our proto files. So the few things we need is let's import star, um, no, let's import path from path. Uh, we will need this when we're trying to pull in our files. We're gonna import star as grpc from um, at grpc.js. And then we're gonna do the same thing. So import star as um, grpc, I think grpc um, proto loader from um, grpc proto loader. Okay, right, so we got all of that. Um, let's also declare a port. So const port is equal to 80, uh, 82. And uh, I think that's everything we need right now. So let's create our proto files, right? This is gonna be really fun. So um, make a directory, I'll make a directory called proto. And then inside proto, I'm just gonna create a file here for our proto service, right? It's, it's technically a package where we're making a proto package right now. And honestly, I'm not good with what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna do random.proto, right? It's just gonna be a package with random services. So I think it's very appropriate that it's gonna be random um, dot proto. So one thing you'll notice is that there's no, you might not have IntelliSense when you do this kind of stuff. So I would recommend that you go to marketplace and you search for proto. Um, I got proto lint and I got VS code uh, proto three. We are using protocol um, proto loader version three. so. Um, good to get that extension. So first thing you do is you define the syntax. So S-Y-N-T-A-X is equal to um, proto3, right? So we have that. And now let's name our package. So this, again, we named this random. So I'm going to say a random package. Um, very appropriate for this. Um, yeah, random package. Okay, so... Now let's define our services. So we'll make a service call random and it's gonna have, let's first start off one by one. So we'll make first our unary call, our unary call. So RPC, um, let's call it ping and pong, right? So the client makes a ping request and servers like pong, simple, right? So ping or ping pong, ping ping, I wrote ping pong. And inside here, it's going to take in a schema definition of what it's going to accept. So I'm going to say um, ping request, and it's going to returns a ping response. So now let's, um, let's, let, let's, let's define this. Also I named this server, it should be service. There you go. Now you got the in, in telesense. So now let's create our um, our sort of request body. And the way we do that, all of these are, are called messages. So we'll go message ping request, and we will just say, uh, let's call this message, right? Let's call this message and it's string. And um, we have to put a number after that. And this is very um, crucial to, um, to our proto files. When you create your messages, they do need to follow a sequential pattern starting from um, one all the way down. And it's, it really defines, it really helps define um, the communication between the server and client. And there's also a bunch of other stuff that happens under the knee, un, un, underneath. 
um, but each message takes up a byte. I'm not mistaken, I'll come back right to that, but each message takes up a certain amount of bytes, which makes it really efficient. So ping request will be a message string, and message pong request will take a message that is, um, sorry, it will take, the first thing is a string, and it's called message, and it's equal to, and it's equal to one. Kind of did this wrong over here. I jumped the gun. So a string message is equal to one. And again, as I said, so if you wanted to add more, more fields, let's say an int 32 field, and this is a val, and it's equal to two, right? It would have to follow sequential numbering, um, sequential numbering pattern um, to this. So ping request, pong request, okay? So now let's save that. And now let's, um, create our TypeScript definition. So what we're gonna do is, what's really handy is that we downloaded Proto Loader, and with Proto Lo Loader comes neat little TypeScript extensions. So I'm gonna make a um, bash script. So I'll just call this um, touch proto gen.sh, right? And over here, I'm gonna do shabam, hashtag, exclamation mark, um, um, bin bash and um, over here we're going to run a script that executes um, our proto loader to compile to TypeScript. So it's going to be yarn proto loader gen types and it's going to dash dash grpc lib is equal to at grpc forward slash grpc dash js and the we gotta specify an out directory so out dir is equal to our same files we want to keep them pretty close to each other so forward slash proto um, proto forward slash and then pro and then all our files if um, this is like a regex to find all our proto files to compiled so it's going to be in the proto file and it's going to be star and it's going to have an extension called proto okay great so now we have this now let's go to package.json and let's make some helper scripts so scripts and we'll call this proto gen and all this is going to do is call the proto gen dot sh okay and another thing we're going to do let's create our start for our server and it's going to be um, ts node, and we're going to call the server file. And then finally, let's just create one for our client. All right, it's going to be ts node client. Okay, missed one comma over here, and let's save that. All right. So now let's see if the script actually works. You know, um, demo gods be with us. Yarn proto gen. Okay, you get this command line thing showing up. Let's run this script directly and see what we get. Okay, right, so no such ping response. Okay, so I probably named something wrong. Yeah, ping request. Okay, so this is pong request. Okay, thank God the compiler is smart enough. I'm gonna be on protogen and um, I should probably run this script directly so I can see what's going wrong. Um, pong request, pong response. Okay, so um, better if I run this command for now, just so I'm not making any mistakes. And here we go. So now we get a bunch of TypeScript definitions um, spit out over here. So now we can use these TypeScript definitions to help us um, um, strongly type our JavaScript. So, so let's get into it. So we go to our, our index file and let's import our proto, let me actually um, point to the file first. So dot slash proto slash random and we're gonna bring our proto grpc type in here. And uh, right now that's the only thing we need. So let's now const package definition let's load our package 
So proto loader dot um, load sync. We want to load it synchronously, and then we're going to use our path dot resolve dash underscore underscore der name comma. Um, oh, we want to not make this a. We want to make this a constant. So over here, const um, proto file is equal to. Um, dot slash proto forward slash um, random dot proto. So we want to load this synchronously. Yeah, proto. Okay, so now we put that in there and now we loaded that synchronously. So now we can make our gRPC object. So const gRPC object is equal to. Um, is equal to grpc dot load package definition, and then we pass our package definition in there. Um, just a little type strip hack. We gotta parse it. We gotta change it to unknown first, and then parse it as a proto um, grpc type. So now we can pull out our package from there. So random package is equal to um, grpc object dot random package. So we're pulling out that random package from here. So that's how we do that. So now let's create a function called main and we're just going to run this function at the very end. And inside here, we're going to initialize our server. So let's do that. So, um, what we're going to do is con server is equal to get server uh, and then we're going to make another function called um, get server sounds, sounds like I'm at a restaurant so get server over here and what we're gonna do is just declare a server is equal to new grpc dot server right we're declaring it and now we're just going to attach, attach our services that we made onto our server. So we're going to do server dot add service and that exists in our random package dot, um, what do we name it? Not ping request, pong request. Uh, we named it random dot service. So we're passing in all our services in there. And then over here, we need to actually pass in our handlers. So, it's an object where the key is the name of the um, the key is the name of the service that we defined over here. So the so service name is ping pong. So if we go over here, it has to be a function. Yeah. So this is how we add a service to the definition over here. So let me just um, save that. And now we have our server. So let's return our server over here. So now server, we're getting our gRPC server. And now all we have to do is server dot um, bind async. And over here, we're just going to bind it to our local host 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0 um, colon, and then interpolate string interpolate our port. And then over here, it takes um, credentials. So you know how I said that um, Protobox works over HTTPS, but on, on your local development, what you can do is just say grpc dot server credentials dot insec create insecure. So it's going to create an insecure server for yourself just to work on it locally. And then it takes another callback function where it's an error and the port number. So we have that callback function over here and we're just simply going to do if error, then we're just going to console log console error, the error, and we're just going to return over here because this is a bad setup. And if not, we're just going to say console.log your server has started on port um, and then string interpolate this port over here. So now we save this and then finally, 
Um, we just have to, we were, we're binding it to the port. All we have to do now is um, start our server. So we'll do server dot um, start over here. So this starts your server and you can't put it after because this is an async function. So as soon as it's binded, then it, then you'll be able to start in the callback function. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this port and put it in here. Okay, cool. Um, let me just double check something over here. Okay, so um, what we can do is bring in our handlers. So there's type definitions for our handlers. And the way we can bring that in over here is if we, um, if we go to our type definitions at the bottom, so import from um, proto forward slash um, not random forward slash random package forward slash random. We should have our um, random handlers over here. So now what we can do is just um, type def type define this. So as random handlers over here. Um, Why is it breaking? Oh, okay, I see. I put it at the wrong place. So as random handlers over here. So now if we hover over ping pong, we can see that it takes in a ping request, which is the output, um, which is weird how it's named that because the pong is the response and it's the output. But anyways, it's probably the output for me. So over here, I'm just gonna say um, request and response over here because that's um, what it technically is, right? It is, this one is a Request a declare, but it never, okay. So let's console log the request and the response for now. And what we're gonna do is let's make sure our server runs, right? So what we're gonna do, we made our helper script. So let's do um, yarn start and let's hope that we see our server running on port 3000. And there you go. So our, it's, it says over, over there, your server started on port 8082. So this is our server starting up. This is our gRPC server set up on um, our machine. So this is, I'm gonna stop the video right here because it's getting quite long. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna come back and we are going to create our client side um, proto file. And we're gonna make our first API call and then we're gonna wrap up all our different handlers that we can make. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. This was the basic setup for um, Node TypeScript with gRPC and Protobufs. Um, I hope you stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.